So good evening. Tonight I thought I'm going to make a small tutorial on how the Mercedes-Benz links, the original ones from the 1970s actually work with our tool sets we can purchase. Now this is the type of tool set you may have seen over on Baum Tools website and you know that this is quite expensive. This is actually a set I got from the Taiwanese manufacturer who makes them for Baum Tools, which is KTC Tools in Taiwan. And I got them here. They have an outlet here in the United States. This kit, as you see, it costs a hundred bucks right here, which is cheap compared to Baum, Baum Tools. However, they label this kit as MBZ1055 and they have listed only the Mercedes-Benz models. I think the earliest ones they have is 1998 and up. That's the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter and it is primarily sold for the diesel chains. And there's a reason for this because the tools which come with it, the dies, have a four millimeter stamp on it. So you can see this is already all later years from what we got. And if you're familiar with this tool here, you may want to skip further down um, to uh, in the video where I'm going to talk about the actual link, chain link from Mercedes-Benz. And uh, there's a reason for this. Even if you're familiar with this tool, you may want to see this later in, in the video because I'm going to go into more details about this here. This kit comes with two pins. These pins are what we call the uh, breaker, chain breaker. And the way this works is basically, you have this part here and this here. So what you do is you turn this out all the way. And then you turn this in and you clamp your chain between the this long piece here. Let me just show you what they look like. It, take that apart first. And I'm gonna use one of their system, their links here they have. This kit comes with a, with two links or with two uh, for the diesel engines. And that is primarily to pull them in more so than anything else and you can see as if i had a chain here if i had a link if i made myself a little link here this basically sits then on here like this and the other side is going to go and sit on here and then the pin actually turns out so with the outer one with this one here you clamp this here you clamp the link, actually, one of the chain links into position. See this, that's gonna fit here in a second. It's gonna go a little bit further in than from what I would like to, but this is just to Roughly demonstrate the soups. Yeah, it came back out of me. So you basically clamp the chain link in. It would sit, of course, more like this on here, like this. And then you start pushing in with the outer one, and that eventually will push the plate out. But I think you may have to use the spacer for this here. This here to hold this whole thing in place. I believe so. You can, no, this is for the other one. I'm not too familiar yet with this tool as I'm working my way in it, but this is basically the idea is that this pin comes out. You clamp this in with the big one between these two, and then you drive the pin out of the plate with by turning this in. So you're gonna hold this here with a wrench and you use a ratchet on this here and that will then break the link basically for you. 
and when you turn this part actually out here this comes all the way out oops it fell down on me because the pin got stuck in this here hey normally that doesn't happen but i had taken it apart to evaluate this you can see this this has an overthrow here on it so you can just simply change the pin and put a new pin in here tighten that up and then you also can change the pin thickness if you have a different chain and this is why i'm making this video and then you just put this back in and this back in so this is the breaker what they're calling the breaker and uh let me put this back in the box here just a lot of screwing. The only purpose this tool here has is to break a, a chain link so you can open the chain up instead of using the grinder if you don't want to use a grinder. And then this should fit here back into the box. Yeah, there we go. That's back in here. Let me see, did I get everything mixed up? No. So this is the purpose. These are two extra pins because if you do this enough times, it will basically break this thing out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this is, but that probably can serve the same purpose. As you can see, this one has the two uh, notches on there so you can actually put the, put the lock in it so you can use this part to pull your new chain in. And this one here, even though it has the same diameter, could be theoretically used to push this out, basically. But this I'm not 100% sure. That might be very specific to the uh, diesel engines. Now, this tool here, on the other hand, is much simpler. This is the one which makes, actually, the rivets. And that goes pretty simple. On this one here, this pin cannot be changed. That is stationary or fixed and it only serves as a guide. And here we have the actual die. You can see this, that has an imprint on it. And they have a other plate, which you can set in here, which is this here. On some chains, the uh, plate you put on here uh, cannot be easily, you know, pushed through. So they're using this to actually push this lock plate over in a case that without making a rivet yet so this is just to to clamp this onto the chain this is the purpose of this die the only purpose this has now in order to make the chain is this thing has a magnet here and you can see this that the link they supplied for four millimeters fits exactly in here and this will basically fit exactly like this uh, and you can see this and then what happens is when the tool is compressed so you insert this here and then you use the double chain guide where this part basically fits in and your chain is going to sit right underneath here you can see that this should actually fit the yeah Whoops, the existing or the pre-made rivets here. And then the chain sits underneath here. Doesn't fit this way, so it goes this way. And this tool here goes in here like this. And you have a screw here. That screw goes in from the bottom. And then this whole thing goes on top of the chain and you have your lock in here of course that thing is uh, this here we will be showing you this on clay's car when we're gonna do this it fits on only this way so they, they fit only in certain ways so this will hold this in place and then you have your chain here and then you're basically starting to tighten I'm losing it here. It probably would be better to demonstrate this on a chain, but for the lack of a chain here at the moment, 
I got to do it like this here. So what you do is you basically load this. You can see this fits perfectly. Then you make sure that the alignment is there where you need this to be when the chain is in place, it will push this up. And then you basically compress this. This doesn't look very straight, but this is basically on how this actually works. I believe, unless we find something else out when we do Clay's car, when we do his his uh, chain. See this, that sits on top then this way, and this is how they have it, and you have your sprocket underneath here, and you start cranking on this here until you have gotten the uh, rivets made. The one tool I'm not 100% sure is this one here, because this one can also be screwed in place of this here, but the four millimeter here fits this one here better. Um, you can see this, this goes in like this, the same way. And you can tighten this up so you don't lose it. And then you can put this one back in. And you can put this here obviously in here too. So you can use this one as well. And uh, that one actually goes straight then or straighter. Doesn't seem to be an exact science if you look at it. But um, that's basically on how they work. Uh, why they made these uh, things here, I have no clue. This entire toolkit came without a instruction manual. So that seems to be for expert chain users or people who have been trained in this. There's no instructions in there whatsoever. You may see the Spence manual also tells you nothing about this. So I'm going to put this back together here for this here. Let me get the screw back out. Because now we're going to come to an issue which most of you are going to be facing one way or the other. And I'm going to show you this here in a second. So this is now the part. This is roughly on how these tools work. So by just cranking this and pushing this part here over, it will form the the rivet heads on these things here even when they have the notches in there you can put this in i think this will work actually better on these chains and you can see the chain is supposed to be sitting in here like this and then it comes in just like this this is not the messy dispense part of course with the wrong plate because this is the metric plate which they're using now. And this gets us to the new Mercedes-Benz. Now the old Mercedes-Benz style. For Clay's car, we got an Ivis chain. And that came with a chain link, uh, one or two of these locks or these guides, and the two little security washers or clips and I do not like them. If I use them, I need like a thousand of them before I get one of them actually on there. These little tiny ones. I cannot even pick one up here. If you have ever seen them, they're really that small. I mean, this is, this is small stuff. In the Mercedes-Benz manual, it will tell you that these clips are only used to have a picture in that only to be used to pull the new chain in and then they're supposed to be removed and when you remove them that's when you're supposed to be using this type of rivet tool to press that new link in there now i went on ebay and i got really lucky i got an original one and this is part number 9900009970 zero five ninety eight that's hard to read made in germany and you can see the old style late 70s and 80s mercedes-benz part stickers they had on there and now we got the real neat thing it, it came in the original ivis in germany it is called e v e s because we pronounce the e the i as an e e this would be Evis Ketten, Evis Change. 
Stöckli, that is the connecting link. And here you can see this is link number D67. And that is a 3 8 by 7 32nd. And it was manufactured on March, that is the 3 there, 6 and 6th of March 1979. This is an original one for specifically for Clay's car. So I got another, uh, an extra one. I came across a new old stock piece. And now that's it. So now we have a set here, which is metric. You can see this right here. And we have a chain link, which is standard. And to show you this, the pin size is one eighth of an inch with three mil over one eighth of an inch. And of course, neither the three millimeter tool or the four millimeter tool will work correctly with them because it's imperial or standard. And we can see this here. So when I insert the actual link cover, you can see this that there's no longer fits exactly in here. And we can kind of slide this forwards and backwards here on this magnet part. But we probably can use it, and this is what they're using, because I was completely unable to find the dies. So if I call them dies, for this kind of tool here in standard size. You can get them in metric and you can get them in the numbers to use on motorcycle chains, but you cannot find a, a die for a, what was it? Three eighths by seven thirty second chain, because that's basically what that is. And that has the three parts to it. The middle part is a tad bit thicker than the outer parts. And that is basically like this. That's basically what that looks like it. So we're gonna use this here and we press this in, even though this is like fitting a, a square pick, not a peg, but a square pick through a round hole, sort of, kind of. And, um, we will make a video of this when we do this, when we pull the chain in, and then we will see on how this is gonna work. Now, all of these tools now, Bosch makes a set like this. I have not been able to find the actual Bosch set, which looks like this here, because that's where they more or less copied it, I would say, or got the idea from for this tool here is from Bosch. And it seems like it since they start with the 1998 model year for these tools, whether the three millimeter or the four millimeter, that uh, that's when the chains actually changed from standard size or imperial size to metric size. And that was quite a revelation. And I guess the reason why the chains used to be standard, even in a German car where everything was metric, was because of the good old steam engine days and steam machine days, when they used chains and that sort of stuff. And uh, since it all originated more or less from England, all of this was done in standard size. I mean, we use standard sizes you know, in Germany uh, quite a bit, but that this was by 1979, still standard size, that surprised me. And I do not know, I think that the uh, chains on the later 126 models, whether the single chain or the double chains were also standard sizes. And uh, it wasn't until even after the 140 that they actually changed the chains over to metric. And this is why we got now only metric tools. Now, Mike, Mr. Impalaman Garage, if you're watching this, since you're the 
go-to guy for these kind of questions is with uh, standard stuff and you know all of your tools and what have you. If you could leave a comment and let me know what tool you would use in the United States for 3 8 3 8 by 7 30 second chain as a riveting tool, which would be the correct one for double chain tool and see what you come up with. Uh, I'm quite curious to see if we can find that tool if they if they're not in a tool museum somewhere here in America. Well, that was sort of the introduction. So not everything is metric and not everything that is round is square, right? And with that, we will have plenty more videos with uh, clay coming up here. We're waiting for parts. And when they come in, we're going to keep posting them. And with that, you have a great night.